Welcome to Bible 180, First Kings. As David grows old, his cutthroat general Joab and one of his sons, Adojanah, conspire to take his throne. However, David and the Lord have picked Solomon. So they have Solomon ride through Jerusalem on David's mule to point out that he is clearly the one chosen by David and the Lord to be the true king. <coughs> Palm Sunday. When Solomon completes and dedicates the temple is the high water mark of Israel's history. In his wisdom, Solomon says, the heavens above can't even contain you, Lord. When we repent, you relent, you rock. The rest is downhill. Solomon worships idols and sets up high places to offer sacrifices according to what his wives want, not according to Yahweh's guidance. The book can truly be called Kings Plural because after Solomon, the kingdom is split into two. Solomon's son Rehoboam refuses the wise counsel of elders, instead listening to the cruel advice of his gang. David's dynasty now will only rule one tribe, the tribe of Judah. The Lord appoints a new dynasty under Jeroboam to rule the other 11 tribes, which become the kingdom of Israel. Unfortunately, Jeroboam becomes even more faithless than Rehoboam by discouraging worship at Yahweh's temple. As a result, there is a dizzying amount of dynasty changes, including one that lasts less than a week. Judah's sins are slightly less egregious than Israel's. Asa is the best king of Judah. He erases some of his predecessor's mistakes, including getting rid of the male shrine prostitutes from Judah, along with the idols his father had made. Ahab is the worst king of Israel, and his wife Jezebel only further corrupts him. So God sends in Elijah the prophet. Through Elijah, Yahweh proclaims, no rain until you acknowledge my reign. Elijah has to find refuge outside of Israel with a widow of Sidon. Now this foreign woman understands Elijah's signs and believes him, but King Ahab and Queen Jezebel continue to rebel. In a showdown at Mount Carmel, Yahweh burns it up, like burns it all up. In the light of such proof and evidence, Israel kills the prophets of Baal and Asherah. But Jezebel vows to kill Elijah. And the Lord comes to Elijah as he flees in a whisper, not a whirlwind, tells him to anoint another king and pick out a prophet to replace him, Elisha. Ahab covers all the bases with his sinning, sinning like David, King Solomon, and every other wicked king along the way. Despite Ahab's crafty plans, he still ends up killed in battle as Elijah had prophesied. These kings get exponentially worse, especially the kings of the northern kingdom. The kings have failed, just as Samuel had warned, even those given every possible advantage, like Solomon. Yet God doesn't abandon his people, instead sending prophets, with warnings accompanied by proofs that they are legit and from him. Yahweh is the sovereign king, whose plans will not be thwarted, even by terrible leadership in the highest of places. God outlasts these king's plans and outlives them. Yahweh is faithful and long-suffering when it comes to enduring and rescuing his people.